That Sunday afternoon, I decided to go for a snorkel. I was snorkeling right here, and I went under the pier and kept going uh, that way. Then, suddenly, the distance, I see something really big, and I'm like, what in the world could that be? <laughs> it looks so big. And of course, like my heart was racing a little bit. I wasn't sure if it was alive or dead. So I stayed there, watched it, and there was no movement. So I knew it was dead. And of course, then the thought came to my head, what could have killed us or what happened? So I started looking around, <laughs> but there was nothing. I didn't have a camera to document it, and no one was going to believe me. So I decided to uh, come back in, get some gloves and some weights, and go dive down and pick it up. <laughs> and I decided to dive down and grab it by the tail, and then I had to push up from the bottom and try to pull it up. After that, it kind of floated on the surface and it wasn't that hard because the water supporting it is weight so I actually could swim with it so I swam and snorkeled over and I was so excited I got to shore and no longer was the water supporting it so it was like boom and it was so heavy I couldn't do anything like I just stayed there kneeling holding the fish uh, so it wouldn't go away with the waves and and I think I yelled toward the pier because I saw a few people there I was actually coming off from our tole sale. Uh, we did a staff trip this past weekend. And right when we got back on Sunday, we actually noticed uh, uh, Jasmine Santana pulling up a huge fish in her hands. And we weren't exactly sure what it was until she brought it to the beach. And we automatically knew it was an oar fish. It was a pretty distinct one. You can tell exactly what it is just by the, the massive size. The fish was so heavy that 14 instructors had to help me carry it from shore all the way to the beach. It was crazy. First thought was everybody started screaming and then started running. Um, we knew that they, they are known to wash up on shore, um, usually because of certain types of diseases, we think. It's all speculation. We don't know too much about it. I first contacted the Natural History Museum and then um, Rick Feeney there at the Natural History Museum and then also uh, contacted uh, Dr. Love, Dr. Milton Love at UCSB, who's an ichthyologist there. And I've dealt with them in the past with uh, the ribbon fish we saw during the spring. Um, I was able to bring the specimens to them. So I contacted them just to see what type of samples, DNA, tissue, fin samples, uh, what samples they would want. Because since there isn't too much known about the fish, if we get as many samples, definitely helps us figure out some more about the animal. I've never experienced anything like this until this until just now, and I've been working in the uh, outdoor education marine science field since 1994. So, and we've had uh, we have employees here since uh, the early 80s that have never seen anything like this. So, it's a pretty special experience. It's amazing. I can't believe that I found that fish, 18 feet long. It just doesn't seem real that I found that fish. It's crazy.